Welcome to Friday Night Frights. I'm Speak to the Sky. I'm Moving Under Fire. And together we're Godspeed Ministries. Welcome to another Friday Night Frights where we're going to talk about injured cold. We're going to talk about his life, his family, and a lot of people have been asking how I know him and if I still see him. So we're going to clear all that, clear all your misconceptions up tonight. We're also going to talk a little bit about hell deer. Okay, so with, with that being said, we're going to get right into this. So you mentioned hell deer. Let's go ahead and start with them, and then we're going to get into Indrid Cold. Um, what did hell deer say in seasons one and two um, when they were talking about Indrid Cold? Well, let me explain to people what who haven't seen it what hell deer is. It's a documentary style style thing on YouTube made by some friends of mine and it's about Kentucky cavemen they were contacted by a guy named David Chrissy and then eventually by Terry Wrist about some cavemen in Kentucky so while they were exam while they were investigating that the whole Indrid Cold story came up with Terry Wrist who actually does not exist because I've spoken with Indrid about Terry Wrist and he doesn't know Terry Wrist. So they went to Kentucky looking for Indrid and there was supposedly a house down there that had gotten torn down or no longer exists and this Terry Wrist says he went up to Indrid's house and Indrid was on the porch and he said Mr. Cold I presume and whoever was on the porch said, my friends call me Indrid. Well, first of all, that would be totally out of character with for Indrid to be just standing on the porch when he hides from everyone else. Mm -hmm. Second of all, it would be totally out of character for him to say, my friends call me Indrid, because he doesn't, wouldn't have known this person. So, yeah, let me interject just a little bit. So when I was binge watching Hell Air, it was July of 2020. And it was right before I had my injured sighting with the UFO ship in Germany on my army base. And that was in uh, July 20th. But a couple weeks before that, I was watching Hell Air. And I've only known Indrid from Tanya's perspective because she's been my friend since 2015, late of 2015. And I didn't know anything about Terry Wrist. I, I thought to myself, this sounds made up. And I think, personally, what my personal opinion is, is, is that Hell Air made up the name for a ratings grab. And... There were a couple things in there that kind of almost made Tanya seem like she was crazy. They were wondering what she meant by when she said the boys, and we're going to get into that. But um, before we get into who the boys are, why don't you just break it down from the start and just kind of introduce people to new people who don't know who Indrid Cold really is. Is he a humanoid? Is he a government psyop like the Hellier series portrayed Indrid to be, which he is not a government psyop? Did he appear in New Jersey two days before uh, your dad's sighting on November 2nd, 1966? So we're going to let you go ahead and talk about that. Okay, Indrid Cold is a man. And I always tell people when they ask me to describe Indrid, I tell them he looks like a young George Hamilton with the tanned, with the tan. Because on Lanyos, they're out, they're out in the sun 15 hours a day so they all have deep dark tans or that may be their skin complexion actually I've never discussed that with Indrid but he is definitely not a government psyop he's a man from a planet called Lanyos and it's in the constellation known as Ganymede and he came here he calls himself he called himself a searcher and when I asked him what he was searching for, because I asked my dad what he was searching for, dad didn't know. And Indrid said he's just, he's looking to make planets with problems like ours, wars and things, more peaceful. But right now they're so afraid of the government because of, he, they see what the government's done to people in Guantanamo Bay and the illegal aliens trying to cross the border that they're not going to show themselves to anyone they can't trust. And they be, they're careful about who they can trust and they can't trust. 
He knows he can trust me because I've known him since I was four years old and I'm going to be 60 in March. So he knows he can trust me. He showed himself to my dad one night when my dad was coming home from Marietta on I-77. My dad was a sewing machine salesman, but he also sold TVs and cereals. And he, he, his ship, well, his craft, his dad called it, his craft pulled, 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 pulled my dad over, and he, this man stepped out of his craft, and he talked to my dad by telepathy, and I didn't understand that for a long time, but I understand it now. So. And right now, Andrew calls himself a UFO knot. Basically, it's like our astronauts, but they call themselves UFO knots. But they're afraid to talk to anybody else right now because they saw the the hearings from the UFO people that were on on in Congress. Talk about the Pentagon and Project what Blue Book or something, whatever it was. Well, I can't it's, it's that Project Blue Book book no longer exists, but yeah, something like that. But I don't remember exactly I think what it was, it was majestic either. Majestic or something like that. Majestic yeah. twelve or something. Where they said that they they were, you know, anything that like a UFO needed to be destroyed and. After what happened in Roswell, and no, that wasn't any of of Indra's people. People get that mixed up, thinking that all alien life forms, or ALFs as I like to call them, look the same, but they don't. Mm-hmm. Those are humanoids, and then there's Indra's, just like. You and I don't all look alike. They don't all look alike, except for their dark skin. So, so Indrid's not a humanoid, he's a man. Yeah. Just from a different planet and a different galaxy. Yes, he's a man from a different planet and a different galaxy. So there you go. There you have it. It's not just humans out there on Earth. There are more. Yeah, I mean, he's got what I call the boys. And a lot of people are saying, well, are they your kids? And no, there's no way they could be my kids. First of all, that would never happen. Second of all, they're around my age. Connor's 68, Connor is 64, and Mystique is 65. So you, you met them back in 1967, right? Right after January, I think it was? Yeah. Yeah, and this was way back then, and they were the ages of 8, 9, and 12. Mystique, right. you said, was the youngest. Connor and Connor were the older ones. Right. Okay. And back then, women were not allowed to ride on ships except for extreme circumstances. But he got permission to bring... He and Carl Ardo, who is Mystique's father, got permission to bring Mystique with them. So... But now they're allowed... To, women are allowed to ride on ships. Women are allowed to ride, uh, uh, women are allowed to be in the space outfit that they, that they have. We're not, we're Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and I can't remember what they call their, their organization, but they only have one organization. Well, it's, it's been said that when Indra t- uh, talked to your dad, it was in the books that they don't have wars on planet Lanulos, and that what he called um, Parkersburg was a gathering. Right. Because he looked at the lights at night and saw this big city, and he asked your dad what that was, and your dad said it was a city of Parkersburg, but Indrid said, well, back on Lanulos, we call that a gathering. Yeah. And it doesn't, I mean, just like things around the world here aren't all the same, aren't called all the same things. Mm-hmm. They're not apparently anywhere else they have what they call the guiding council which is like our congress and senate where they have people from different 
areas of Lanyos and some from different different places that are all out of guiding council and that's what they were looking for that night was someone to be on the guiding council and at first they thought my father would be a good fit but then they realized that he wasn't a good fit but he was a good fit for spreading the word about them and hopefully getting people to maintain some semblance of calm instead of being told that oh if they're if they're found out that there's aliens people are going to throw babies out windows and make all kinds of mayhem which is not true okay so we talked a little bit about some of the people at play here with carl ardo and demo hassan and the kids um mystique connor and connor connor um Tell us a little bit about the explosion. So Hellier prefaced it. They they came out. This is when you said that Indrid was dead because you didn't know what was happening, and that turns out they didn't know either. Go ahead and tell everybody about that. No, I was living in a nursing home at the time. Right now I'm just in the hospital. But I was living in a nursing home at one time, and one night very late or very early in the morning, I think it was two something, I got in that I heard the door open. And I saw two tall men, strangers, walking toward my bed. Of course, it was very dark. And they told me not to be afraid. And they announced themselves as Connor and Connor. And I thought it was really weird that Indrid was not with them. So before I could ask, you know, where's your dad? They started crying and told me that there was an explosion. That they were sitting looking at the, watching the radar. There was an explosion while they were out chasing humanoid ships and they strongly believed that all three men are dead. Indrid, Dimo Hassan, and Carl Ardo. But several months, well, almost a year later, I got a I woke up to a strange person at the foot of my bed and he was still heavily bandaged and it was injured. So he said somehow he got he got into the mountains and that's where the boys found him. Because they were like GPS tracker type things on their suits. So if this happens they can find him. But he was he told them not to tell me because he was afraid for my safety because he knew he couldn't keep me safe. And he always told my father that I would be physically unharmed as long as he was around. Mm -hmm. And he said that about your friends too, right? Yes. Yeah, and I think that's why I saw his ship in Germany on July 20th of 2020. But so um, when he showed up heavily bandaged, you woke up in the nursing home, and this was at night, right, when he showed up? Yes. And you didn't really recognize him at first, right? No, I didn't know who it was. He had to tell me who it was. Because it didn't look like him, did it? No, it didn't look like him because he had been burned over over seventy percent of his body. But they can stand pain better than we can. That's amazing. And and the others died in that explosion, Demo Hassan and Carl Ardo? Yeah, the other two have never been have never been found. So they're definitely they've definitely been listed as dead. Now I read in your book when I uh, read it a couple of years ago in Germany that you made an assertion that was it Carl Ardo or I think it was Demo Hassan could have possibly been Valiant Thor what what do you think about that or is that not true at all I honestly don't remember that okay but it's probably I probably did write it and no I don't believe it's true okay um because just seeing the three of them together you could tell Indrid was in charge and Ender Cold was not Valiant Thor either. Okay. Well, that's, that's that straight. Um, I don't know if any people come from v the planet Venus. I know that's been <coughs> theorized before. It doesn't make much sense because it's such a hot, gassy it's a planet with the clouds and the greenhouse effect. Do you have any knowledge of any of that or all, all three of these men from the planet Lanulos? No, they were all from the planet Lanulos. Which is not in our galaxy. It's in the Ganymede galaxy. Right. Okay. All right. 
I'd heard that before and I just wanted to clear that up because I wasn't sure either. Um, okay, so we've talked about the explosion a little bit <coughs> and we know that Indrid is alive right now. And what's his age again? He's got to be up there, right? Yeah, he's like 101. And and the reason they can be live longer is because on their planet, explain to the people watching on, how it is different. On their planet, they live to be 125 to 175 years old. And a lot of that is because they don't eat processed foods like we do. They're mostly all vegetarians. Mm -hmm. Because when they one day when they and the boys came down, mom fed them lunch. And the boys had never had hot dogs or macaroni and cheese. And they just thought that was the best thing in the world. <laughs> now they do raise cattle for milk. And they do raise pigs. So they do eat some pork. But mostly it's plants and vegetables. Mostly it's gardens that they, that they grow. And it's basically one community garden where everybody in a centralized area can go and get fruits, all the fruits and vegetables that they can eat. And they all help, help tend this garden. So the whole, the whole community works together. And what I mean by community I mean 50 to 100 families in one centralized area, kind of like the suburbs that we know here. Okay, so we've talked about a lot of that stuff. Is, is there anything else that you'd like to describe about Indrid in this situation? I know we'll have more to talk on another show. Um, we're going to talk about our Parkersburg Paranormal Fest uh, for the regional people watching this show, and that's going to be a big deal here in Parkersburg. We'll be doing that from July, I think, 23rd to the 25th, right? June 23rd to the 25th. I said the wrong month. It's June. Yeah. Um, but is there anything else? And we're, that... I'm doing it in that time period because June 24th is National UFO Day. Okay. And I thought that would be a neat time to to do it. So we're, I'm gonna. I'm not sure where I'm gonna throw it yet. I'm gonna need a lot of help, but. I'm going to be sending out vendor letters and I'd like to have some place where I can get like 50 vendors and the evening of the 23rd is going to kind of be a get together for the vendors. The 24th we're going to have speakers during a day, a break, and then we're going to have more stuff going on at night and we're going to have some vendors who want to do live podcasts from, from that location. And then the 25th in the morning is going to be a breakfast for the vendors. So this isn't just for people interested in UFOs, right? Isn't it for all? Um, like so all for, for all paranormal. We're going to have some people talking about Bigfoot. Um, I'm hoping to have someone from the Mothman Museum there. Which is close to here in Point Pleasant. It's yeah. about, what, 30 miles away or so? Yeah. Okay. And I'm hoping to have ghost hunters and astrologers and just all kinds of people. I know last time that you and I got together, it was 2018, right as I was entering the Army, and I happened to be right after training, a basic training, so I came home, and it happened to be during this event, and that was at the Dill Center. Well, the Dill Center just closed this year, so that's why we're scrambling to find another location for it, but we'll get something going between June 23rd to 25th, but I remember then they had uh, Al Alms or Ames, I think it was Ames, Mountain Men, West Virginia Mountain Men there. That was right. a big deal at that time. I don't, I don't even think they are doing anything anymore, but um, but anyway, so yeah, it's going to be a big event. It's going to be for anybody interested in anything paranormal. Uh, any of you guys watching the show, if you're interested, reach out to us. What's the best way to get a hold of you if anybody's interested in attending this event? On Facebook. And that's a Tanya Derenberger. So just like it sounds, well, T-A-U-N-I-A -A, and then Derenberger is just like it would sound. So. Yeah, D-E-R-E-N-B-E-R-G-E-R. Or you can go on the Beyond Lanyos Facebook page or my A Man Named Cold Facebook page, which I'm going to talk more about next time, which is my new book coming out soon. Okay, and yeah, we got to get that up. Eventually, if you guys are interested in a book, you, you can reach out to her. None of them are pub published yet. we got to get them done. I think you're going through Amazon or something, but either way, yes. we'll, we'll get that done. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about maybe for next show for Friday Night Frights on Indrid Cold? Nothing I can think of. We'll just, I'll, I'll be talking about 
more recent visits because they he he does come to visit me. He doesn't do much with the guiding council because if he's in charge of it, boys come to visit me a lot because they think a lot of me because we were all young kids together. So we basically grew up together at the same time. All right, well, thank you for the interview and we're gonna keep the um, topic on injured cold for next Friday Night Frights. We, we are still updating our coverage on the Gretchen Fleming case for all you subscribers that have come on board with that. We thank you. We're glad to have you here and we'll have a lot more. We've, we've got some ideas of where to look on that too. So look for more coverage on that too. So thank you for tuning in and for Speak to the Sky. I'm moving under fire and we will see you next Friday night at nine o'clock on Friday Night Frights.